about uh, 10 till 15 minutes time from the public who would like to ask uh, probably some questions to either Mr. Iman or Mr. Chris or uh, Pak Edi, if there's any. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Resto Satrio Tomo from uh, Asian Corporate Credit Divisions for Japanese Bank, uh, Bank of Tokyo Mitsubishi Brussels branch. Uh, I agree with uh, Ms. Chris Bozard that we are weak in the infrastructure and the bureaucracy. Uh, my question to Mr. Chris Bozard. Uh, FDI Indonesia already increased to 20%, 19.3 billion, and we are also behind from uh, uh, China, which is 116 billion FDI, and also we already just uh, uh, upgraded rating into investment grade from junk after 14 years. That after the Asian crisis, that we are all the banks have gone, and Mr. Chris was already uh, experience of that problems by trying to find the rupiah under Singapore. So, uh, based on my experience, that uh, as uh, one of the uh, a part of the Indonesian bank previously in New York, uh, we also have a trouble that we try to link between the here, between all the, we have the natural resources, we have people, we have everything, but how to get overseas, how to have any link and match between these uh, persons, these uh, resources, and problem that is uh, Indonesia already upgraded. This is a perfect time. Also, uh, Mr. Nurul said that 2013 we are, we are on the way to there. And we, as a banker, a uh, national banker overseas, we have a overseas, we try to implement overseas micro lending. Problem that the bank has right now to support any other, uh, any debitors in Indonesia, also in uh, overseas, that um, we are not recognized well as a bank of an uh, Indonesian. For example, Mandiri, we have Mandiri branch in UK. We have uh, in Bank Negara, Indonesia in UK, also in New York and Hong Kong and Singapore. But it's uh, very limited. So if ever that's a, a opportunity for Indonesian banks, and the problem that point number two is very interesting, bureaucracy and cor corruptions. What we have is not the financial risk most of the time. What we have is the litigation risk most of the time. So when we give lending to the debitors, uh, the end of the problem is we always get into the jail. For example, the director, and especially we are national banks. The litigation always came up. We get high, high, high position, high position to, this, to give a, a credit decision, but the end, what we get is always the litigation problem. So if ever any input by Mr. Chris Bozer regarding the bureaucracy, uh, maybe for the banker side in particular, it can be manageable how to maintain the, it become better for our side as a banker to support everybody here maybe in the future of going overseas, that will be great. So I, will, I would like to appreciate for that, thank you. I don't want to bring you any bad news anyway, but uh, first of all, let's say, I'm, I'm taking the latest slides from uh, the Indonesian stock exchange. Indonesia was a, a triple B minus, and today we are on a B double A triple uh, plus. Now that's a better situation than countries like Italy, Spain, Ireland, Portugal. So Indonesia is doing seriously better. And indeed it took 10 years to get out of the the, the mangroves and to get back here somewhere in the picture. But you know what the most tricky side of all this is? <clears throat> Indonesia did wrong 10 years ago what Europe is doing wrong today. That means banks in Indonesia, they were investing in everything, real estate, uh, private companies. Uh, at the end it was, uh, I'm a, a successful industrial person, I like a checkbook with my own name on it, you know what, I buy a bank. So that crippled the whole banking system. And what we see now in Europe and what you saw in Indonesia, I don't think Indonesia is still out of that uh, area. I think banks have now back a function they had 20 years ago. That means taking a deposit, keeping it well, and lending under very restricted conditions. And it should stay that way, by the way. Uh, and banks 
certainly not in Indonesia and certainly not in the US, although they're making the same error again. They shouldn't get into the complicated market with the complicated products again, because then again there will be big problems coming up. And I think what we will learn from the European situation having now, that we go to a new type and system of financing economy. It will not be banks anymore. Uh, for instance, the stock exchange market will dramatically change too, because what was a bank? A bank has a value zero. It's not the beautiful Mandiri building, which is worth money. You know, it's trust. And banks all over the world have shown to the people with whom they were working and to people who trusted them with their money that we can't trust banks. So their basic function is gone. You see what I mean? So I don't think that is really a solution for your problem. Mandiri, and it's not up to me, but they should stay away from complicated products and just be a banker like it was 30 years ago. Thank you, Mr. Chris Bossard. Um, is there still? Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, I'm Mohamed Najib from Tatar. Uh, from Mr. Chris. I'm, I'm very, very happy when you said that don't, don't, don't try to bribe the young Indonesian people because they will refuse it. But uh, I think unfortunately the situation is not exactly like that. <laughs> I think, I'm still thinking that corruption is still a kind of uh, culture in Indonesia. It's becoming culture in Indonesia. From the very low level until very high level. As long as there is not enough control, as long as there is no law enforcement, as long as there is no good example from the older people, the corruption will go on, including it will be, it will infect uh, also all the young people. I would like uh, uh, your, your comment about that. Thank you. I think corruption is a very complicated thing and corruption is an infraction which is on both sides. The one who is corruptive and the one who is going with the corruption. I mean, I had many situations, for instance, if you put a factory uh, in industry and you need an environmental impact study, most Indonesian companies, they don't even know what it is, so they don't make their environmental impact study. And then they get, when they needed to uh, renew their licenses, they get a whole bunch of government people in and they ask, to their environmental impact study. They don't have one, so they say, well, if you don't have one, you know what? You slip me 30 million under the table and we forget about it. Yeah. There it's already wrong. Don't slip the 30 million under the table. Just do what you are asked by the law and make your envir environmental impact study. You understand what I mean? So the corruption, it is a mentality. Not Everybody is always complaining about corruption, but to be corruptive, you have to be with two, eh? the one who's paying and the one who's receiving. Understand what I mean? And everybody tries in Indonesia still to shortcut taxes. We see what happens like in Greece. If you don't pay your taxes, the whole country goes down. Taxes, yeah, we need taxes to make the system working. So if on a, on a, on, on a steady base you try to get around taxes and you're talking about oil uh, business total, I know those people, they try from all sides to get the best spots, to get the best things going, and they are the one who are corruptive too, because they try to, to, to run at the side of the law. And that's what I see in Indonesia too. The corruption is much more a problem in remote areas than it is in big cities. Because it takes more time to get it out of the way over there, and it takes more time to make people sensible that the law is there to be respected. Corruption, the very basic one, a, a policeman taking graft because you're running without a helmet on your motorbike. For God's sake, the law is you have to put a helmet, and if you don't put one and you have an accident, you're dead. So it's normal you have to put a helmet. If you don't put it and you get away with it with a bribe, don't complain that the country is corruptive because you are wrong in the first place by not putting it on. And I swear to God, in all these years, each time Graft was asked to me, I said always, and it's perhaps a, it's not really the right country to give the example, but it's probably a Jewish uh, mentality. A Jew will ask, always ask, uh, um, answer you a question with a question. If somebody asks you a bribe, just ask him why. And then I, I, I did it all my life. For instance, in the old time at immigration, I have five kids. You go from Bali home. I said, ah, oh, yeah, but uh, hundred thousand. 
You just say, why 100,000? Because you are seven people? <laughs> you understand what I mean? You go to, uh, to an area where you have to park your car to go uh, on board the ship. The army is regulating the traffic there. They say, we need 50,000 to let your car go by. Why? Well, they have no answer, and you have to see their faces. Oh, Jesus, ask them, why? <laughs> yeah, okay, let him go. You understand what I mean? And it's often the best solution, just asking why you should bribe. And if you get as an answer, because you have infracted the law, because your paperwork is not straight, well, you have your problem on your own, and it's a choice to make. Or you, you straighten out your paperwork, or you pay the bribe. That's the way to go. Yes. Yes, Leonardo and his family. We have a little bit of time. Yes, please. My name is John Fergus from France. Uh, I'd like to address this question to Vaidi. Uh, I did not catch up uh, the message you were delivering about uh, discouraging the investment atmosphere in Indonesia. But uh, knowing your uh, Knowing you here as a practitioner and business consultant, uh, could you please uh, probably share the positive points uh, that we can uh, improve or to, to what you have been uh, informed us during your presentation? Thank you. Yes. The positive thing is that, uh, as all uh, gentlemen already informed us, that even the prime, uh, British Prime Minister said that Indonesia mampu memimpin dunia five times. Mr. Obama also mentioned the same thing. Okay, but again, we have to do on the smart way. If you want to invest in Indonesia, it doesn't mean that what all ever the figures is very positive. Yeah, it doesn't mean that you it's a very smoothly entrance. Again, because we don't know what other people say. Uh, firstly, this, uh, actually, I, because I don't have uh, time to uh, 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 explain the whole things, but the first, you have to appoint somebody who knows exactly who to communicate with media, for example. Yeah. Because when on the crisis management, like Freeports, like Newmont's, like uh, 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 Lapindo, there should be somebody who can assure that the investment is still safe. Okay? Yes, again, as I mentioned to you, business is calculated risk. Yeah? Yes, there is a gold mine there. Yes, there is a mountains of copper there. Yes, there is a mankan, uranium, whatever you name it, but it needs our uh, 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 strategically uh, steps. Yeah, you have to know how to settle each sector, from manpower, from political, from legal, from <coughs> uh, uh, environment, from media, and security and safety, and so on. That's why uh, at Freeport, you can found uh, the security consultant from all over the world. You will find U.S. Ranger, you will find U.S. Marine, you will find uh, SAS uh, security uh, in Australia, uh, 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 special squad. You can ask the uh, uh, South African Army, you can find the uh, uh, British Army Gurga. Yeah. They are all there because Freeport, Newman, ask them as a consultant. How to do if uh, to uh, how to set up the response team? Yeah, because if there is a uh, uh, let's say if there is a flame, you have to kill the flame in the first minute. Don't take any longer. Don't, don't have to. You have to wait until the decision of the headquarters to survive it. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of story about that. But BP have a, a, a same case at Colombia. That's why BP in, in, in LNG Badak is very kind with our people. Yeah, unfortunately, we got the, the, the accident in the Mexico Gulf. 
to make the, 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 the operation in, in, in Indonesia is not so fast as the, as is planned. Okay, so again, this the positive way, yes, the opportunity is there, right? Uh, 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 the result of the investment, the return of the in investment is faster. But the one that I told you is, as long as you are work on the natural base industry or public service company, because it is very uh, close to the people's hearts. You see, as I already mentioned to you, huh? uh, what, 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 whatever will happen right now. <clears throat> okay? Uh, Lapindo, up to now, there is no final or, 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 uh, or clear and totally cross. You see? Even whoever, can you imagine one city? Same. In situation. People not only lost their house, they lost their hope. They lost their life. See? Again, it's L7. That's why if you are going to invest in uh, oil and gas, mining, uh, 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 public transport, or, or, or or a hospital or hotel, as long as there is close to people uh, sensitivity, you get. Because, uh, for example, in the one industrial park, eh, if there is demonstration, then the union of the worker asks the whole worker who work on uh, those uh, uh, industrial park to join their demonstration. They block the toll road. Yeah? If they block the toll road, you can imagine. Uh, the, the, the vice president of Sony informed me, Elisa, in our headquarters, I called by Mr. Apollo. And I asked why? Because I always apologize. The delivery schedule from Indonesia is always late. For example, is the, there is an MM2000 in, 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 in uh, industrial park in Krawa. Uh, yes, it's very nice industrial park, but the way to this industrial park, people uh, 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 claim it's happened suddenly. So they block the road. If they block the road, you can imagine 120 companies cannot work on the time. And how about the delivery schedule? How about the, the production cost? <coughs> Daily production cost? You have to offer. Yeah, it's even very simple. It's clear for you now. Okay. Uh, thank you, Thank you, Mr. Andy, because uh, uh, Pak Havas from the Indonesian uh, uh, Ambassador would like to share uh, with you about this uh, corruption issue which is we've been talking about. And here is, uh, you can see it and read it probably together. Yeah, this is, uh, I just want to share with you, Pak. Uh, this is European Parliament resolutions on the EU's effort to combat corruption. The resolution of Parliament in Europa mengenai korupsi di Europa. Okay, this is very interesting. An estimated 120 billion euros per year is lost to corruptions in EU. So maybe we can learn from them to steal 120 billion dollars. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you for uh, Mrs. Chris Bossard, uh, Iman, and uh, uh, Eddie. And we're going to do the next uh, session.